So let's say you already heard about Bitcoin and Ethereum. Maybe you even know that someone has made money on them or perhaps someone who has been seriously burned. I'm financially ruined. You're not exactly broke, right? 986 million. I'm not a billionaire anymore, Richard. Beyond these two major players, are you also familiar with the stable tokens, NFT, governance tokens? Do you know what central banks globally have been working on for several years and what is CBDC? Can you distinguish between Monero, Aave, Polkadot, USDC, CryptoKitties and Wi-Fi tokens from Roblox, PayPal or Alipay? Moreover, is it even necessary for you to know all this? Hi everybody, Oleg Ivanov with you with the Ivanov Invest channel and Token Stories. Here we will lift the veil on the blockchain and cryptocurrency market, dispel myths and try to make it as simple as possible. Please speak as you might to a young child or a golden retriever. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming episodes. And today we are continuing the first series of videos in which we are inviting you to dive into a short and simplified tour of various types of cryptocurrencies. In the last video we said that we will be using the approach of a car driver. You can drive a car, but you are not obliged to understand the transmission or the internal combustion engine. C'est bien votre truc là, mais comment on fait pour l'arrêter? Oui. Alors il suffit de dire niac. Likewise, in talking stories, we will bypass the technically confusing topics of cryptography, transactions, hashes and mining with consensus and will concentrate on the most accessible and simplified classifications of various cryptocurrencies, tokens, coins, so that for the regular user things can become a little bit more clear. Why there are so many different cryptocurrencies and how they can be useful for you and me now. So what's in it for me? Since a lot of material has accumulated since the birth of crypto, to keep things simple, we decided on a very simple format. One video, one topic. In the last episode, we examined the difference between cryptocurrencies and electronic money. Make sure you watch this video following the link here. And today, in the second part of Token Stories, we will analyze the difference between security and utility tokens and examine why arrows in this classification led to forceful closure and multi-million dollar fines on thousands of blockchain projects, including the notorious blockchain project from Pavel Durov, Telegram Open Network, why also some projects were given green light to conquer the crypto world. Let's take a look. Utility tokens or security tokens. Financial regulators in most countries quite rightly began to seriously fear an influx of scammers seeking to profit from the accumulations of trustful investors who send their crypto assets to certain investment projects, in fact, not exactly investing, but rather buying tokens of such projects. The clearest criterion which appeared after a short discussion was put forward by the American Securities and Exchange Commission in the format of the simple and well-known Hobie test to determine whether a particular instrument or commercial operation is an investment contract or not, and accordingly, a security or not. If your project or proposal includes four points and implies investing money in a common enterprise, expectation of profit from investments and implies efforts from third parties or agents, then your offer of tokens must fall under the legislation on regulation of securities and in fact is a security token. Any security token is a digital expression of existing financial instrument in a digital blockchain form. In fact, behind each token there is a certain correctly drawn up contract with a specific company located in a specific jurisdiction and engaged in a specific activity with specific audited financial indicators. In other words, a security token is a representation of real-world asset in a digital form structured in a legally compliant framework. It can be shares or bonds of a company, square meters of real estate, artwork or even a bottle of Chardonnay. Well, that's great, right? Everything is protected, signed, documented, legally protected. There is, however, one big but. 
all such transactions can only be carried out with qualified investors in the jurisdiction in which you were issued an appropriate permit to work on such investors, all kinds of licenses and certificates, and number three, through authorized platforms that are allowed to trade security tokens. They are also called STO platforms. These three big fat butts put an end to many initiatives since going through all these steps negates any advantage of launching security tokens versus issuing traditional securities. You still need to obtain same licenses in permits. You still have the same restrictions in geography. For example, if you can work with European investors, you will not be capable of working with investors from USA or China. And finally, most STO platforms, as of now, sort of resemble a scorched planet after the battle between Thanos' army of the Black Order with the Marvel's Avengers squad. Looking at the sad trading volumes on the top STO platforms like Polymath, Securitize Swarm, and comparing them with their top colleagues, in the crypto market, Binance, Coinbase and so on, any project founder and investor would ask a question. If the procedure of launching a security token is roughly similar in terms of costs and difficulties to issuance of your ordinary securities, then what do I need all these STO platforms for when I can simply go the traditional way to traditional exchanges and brokers and attract investments traditionally? STO does not give me any benefit here at all, but if I do, want to get access to the world through a more open window of the crypto market, then I will make sure I try my best and use all efforts in trying to avoid falling under the HOE test criteria to get into the ranks of utility tokens. I would simply need to adapt my business model, get the regulator's approval, and we're set to go. So, what is this utility token then? Basically, utility tokens try to build a kind of an ecosystem around themselves within which you can pay only with this token. The simplest example is your old-style subway. To use the subway, you need to buy a token. One token equals one trip. So you buy this token and you put it into the machine which lets you through. Without this token, you cannot enter. Therefore, you spend your local currency to buy the tokens first and pay with them in the ecosystem. Also, the price of such tokens is subject to change, sometimes rapidly. Yesterday it was 90 cents and today it is $5. So most blockchain projects that launch their cryptocurrencies owe tokens describe some kind of an internal economy in which it is impossible to pay with traditional money, your dollars, pounds, yuan, but only through a purchase and use of your project tokens, like your Bitcoins, Ethereum, Monero, Polkadot, inside this project. Investors at the same time are buying such tokens in bulk in the hope that with the growth of users in selected projects and with a limited number of tokens, the price of such tokens over time will grow. The success of such projects will be different, of course, as in fact in any business area. We all know that the survival rate of startups and new businesses is quite low. There is an opinion that almost one out of every 10 projects survive in traditional spheres. So what can we expect from startups in innovative areas? However, such classification regarding utility tokens began to allow blockchain projects to prosper because it allowed them to, number one, avoid serious legal costs for launching their projects, secondly, attract investors literally from all over the world, and third, to enable all token holders to sell and buy such tokens at almost any time on dozens and dozens of global crypto exchanges. Thousands of projects launching their cryptocurrencies around the world flooded the market. Founders were playing around with both some obvious initiatives to transfer the already successful centralized online businesses to the blockchain on the one hand, such as, let's say, cloud storage, social networks, messengers, games and gambling, insurance, and some unique exotic projects with an unclear benefit from blockchain uh, itself, on the other hand, like the tokenized sand quarry Sandcoin, the weed-loving Paragon coin, or the national petrol coin of Venezuela, in just a few classy examples. Most of these custom or business applications of blockchain have come to grips with two blockchain technology problems. First, the throughput speed of transactions in Ethereum and Bitcoin networks turned out to be too low for current business problems. 
For comparison, MasterCard and Visa are capable of processing up to 24,000 transactions per second, whereas Ethereum only 284 transactions per second and Bitcoin is only 7. 7 transactions per second. Secondly, as it turned out, the model of operation of the first generation of blockchain networks based on the so-called proof-of-work consensus algorithm turned out to be very expensive to scale. In other words, if you're a successful business and start to increase your user base and they start to increase the number of transactions in the network, then in an ordinary world, the price per one such transaction is traditionally greatly reduced with the growth in scale. But in blockchain, the result is just the opposite. As the network load grows, the transaction price also starts to rise, which is deadly for any business, since growth not only does not allow you to reduce the costs, but it also does not allow you to predict such costs. You never know what price you will have to pay for such transactions in the future. These technological restrictions launch the so-called blockchain arms race. One after another, new projects began to appear, calling themselves another Ethereum killer. Sidechains, multi-chains, DAG grids, cross-chain. Dozens of new technological innovations started popping up, which over time started to be classified in four fundamental layers of blockchain solutions. Layer 0, 1, 2, and the last one, the user or the application layer. Each layer consists of its own projects. Each project has its own tokens dozens of them. And how can we differentiate among such project tokens? We will talk about in our next episode. So subscribe, click on the bell so you don't miss on the next episode. And please, please share your stories in the comments below that what are the most famous and interesting cryptocurrency bans you have heard about and what conclusions did you make when hearing such news? I'm sure many of us watching this video, including myself, will be very interested to read about your experience. It has been a great pleasure to be with you guys today. Oleg Ivanov, Ivanov Invest Channel with Talking Stories. Have a good week and stay safe.